the application of the underwater robots we use are mainly to make measurements and sometimes to bring back water samples. The biggest challenge with this project is being able to be ready when you go out there. You really can't have anything failing because you might lose your robot. I'm an engineer and a roboticist and uh, my team builds techniques that enable robotic exploration of large bodies of water. There are many challenges to doing this uh, style of work. The waves cause a lot of damage to our robots. Recently when one of our gliders was operating, it got hit by a small boat. And one of the biggest issues there is that with the surface currents, it's not necessarily clear what the trajectory of the glider is. I had to trace it down uh, using the last known location as well as the predictions of what the currents are going to do. This was pretty tricky, <laughs> but I luckily managed to get, get to it. The gliders allow us to perform better monitoring in the ocean and also in uh, inland waterways. We allow uh, researchers in microbiology and researchers in marine science and oceanographers to broaden and deepen their understanding of the environment. So we study plankton communities uh, in the ocean. Uh, it's, it's a huge environment. Uh, it has both breadth and depth, literally, uh, as well as figuratively. And it's very difficult if you're studying uh, what drives plankton communities to cover that sort of distance, uh, space, and time. And so we collaborate with roboticists with, with the ability to actually know what's going on in the ocean without actually physically being there all the time. And we can also monitor uh, quantities that are involved in harmful algae blooms and potentially provide some information about climate change. All of these are very high impact problems right now uh, in terms of being able to understand our environment and our impact on the environment. A big thing that many people don't realize is that when you deploy robots underwater, you can't just communicate using radio waves, like you can't have Wi-Fi or you don't have GPS. So there is a fundamental need for autonomy. We want to make robots more self-sufficient. We want to make them more intelligence. And so in order to do that, what we did was to build a little computer that's going to sit in the glider. And this computer allows us to run fairly sophisticated algorithms on board. We can transfer data from the glider onto our computer, process it right there, and then make decisions about which data is more important. Using these robotic vehicles uh, is going to save a lot of costs versus using like ships or personnel time. And uh, they can make far more persistent measurements than if you were going out there yourself. From an engineering point of view, we get a chance to be able to make a real difference uh, to the data quality that uh, scientists get. We're actually um, putting these systems out into the ocean. We're working with the biology department to help make things that are useful for them. It has been astounding to work with people like Garo Sukatme uh, because he, he and his group have, uh, have solutions for problems that, that we do not have solutions for. It's important to think about uh, the data that we are gathering using robots in the ocean as a way for marine scientists to monitor the health of the environment. And I get really passionate about working with biologists and oceanographers to solve science problems that actually have real world impact. And those are the kind of problems that we look at when we work with the gliders.